we are so sick of white women right now. First, I got riled up because a couple of Karens told a Mexican woman she was wrong to buy decor for Dia de los Muertos at Spirit Halloween. And then this Becky gave me crap over semantics. And then Pitney saw an article about this paranoid TikToker who was upset that all the Alexas she put in her house are listening to her. But then things get much happier when we get to bitchin' in the kitchen and cook up some delicious chicken parm. And this week for our self-care segment, I read an essay by author Brianna Wiest. Bon appétit! about this dumb bitch oh my god so dia de los muertos we've talked about cultural appropriation before we've talked about i mean everyone knows you know it's like you know dressing like a mexican is not a costume Uh, dressing like an indian not a costume blah blah but so it all started a, a, a Facebook account that I follow that's actually a very fabulous account and it started off as a, a quite awesome discussion uh, that was that was like a hey I'm not saying that you should walk into a spirit Halloween store with a big pair of scissors and just walk up to you know like the Indian princess costume in a bag and just you know cut it to pieces Uh, and walk out you know like i'm not saying you should do that i'm i you know because that would be illegal i'm certainly not suggesting and so people were talking about like oh and like the like the fort like the gypsy fortune teller like Uh, let's let's not suggest that people go in there and set fire to all of those and you know just people kind of being generally catty about such things well then Someone, I'll just call her Lexi. Okay. And sounds like so a dumb Lexi. white bitch to me. Oh, she's absolutely, she's absolutely a white bitch. <laughs> Lexi starts talking about how one should go in there and yeet the sugar skulls and all other appropriations of Dia de los Muertos while you're there. And then a woman... Uh, says, why? Well, for the same reason that Indian princess costumes are. And she said, but we actually dress up and decorate as part of Dia de los Muertos well, yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Well, are you part of that culture? Because if you're not, it's not for you to say. It's cultural appropriation. Oh, God. Well, yes, I am. I am Mexican, so it's nice to have what I need available when I need All it. Right. So didn't did that woman just say she was Mexican? Yeah. Well, if this was an honest attempt at learning about cultural appropriation, then while I appreciate your curiosity, you need to do your own emotional and intellectual labor to find out why you honestly don't understand. Oh. Uh. So the Mexican says, uh, how about you stop being offended that the things I use are mixed up in Halloween crap just because it's convenient. There are not a lot of Hispanic stores where I am, so it's nice to have things handy for me. And then this other bitch uh, chimes in, but in a spirit Halloween, that's straight up colonizer shit. Oh okay, my all right, white God. girls. Okay, white girls, everybody calm the fuck down. Let's not lecture the Mexican on her holiday. Sh- can we not? And I I would be willing to bet money that I don't even have that both these bitches 
they're goddamn grad students and or academics. You know they have so much Frida Kahlo shit in their dorm rooms. Oh, you know no. they do. You fucking know they do. They're goddamn grad and, students or academics that need to shut the fuck up about everything yeah. anyway. Yeah. And the girl's like, hey, find me a Dia de los Muertos store and I will gladly shop there. Yeah. And it's like, well, Google can help you. There are plenty of Mexican-owned stores, blah, blah, And she's like, okay, but not in my town. For the rest of us, there's Spirit Halloween. Uh, yeah. And then Lexi is like, Spirit Halloween gives zero fucks about your Mexican heritage. They are, a they are selling a cherry-picked aesthetic made in China, probably, for making a profit. You know, it's like, off of culturally appropriation Halloween costumes. And then this other woman who's clearly Mexican uh -huh. goes, are you seriously telling someone else how to celebrate and prepare for her own culture? Do you not see how you are attacking someone who is from said culture because you have some standard as to how and where she needs to get her supplies? And how about you mind your own goddamn business? Fabulous. And Lexi goes, I said no such thing. She can buy whatever she wants from wherever she wants. Sucks her community doesn't have a more diverse shopping options. BIPOC small business owners there probably can't compete with the mega stores owned by corporations like Spirit Halloween. Oh and she's like, my God. Yeah, and every, yeah. it's like, okay, the Lexis of the world, the people who are of the cultures that you are allegedly trying to defend, they fucking know. They don't need your fucking help. Oh, yeah. Shut the fuck up. White savior that you think you are. Shut the oh, fuck up. God. As a as the whitest of white people, please, I am begging you to shut the fuck up. I am begging you as a representative of white people. We don't need you. Please shut up. Yep. And I, oh my God. And I, I, I will say it again. I'm willing to bet any amount of money. She's a goddamn academic. Oh my God. I, it, it's just, and she's I, probably a grad student, a white bitch grad student in Latin American studies. Oh my god! I, I it is so so fucking tempting. I it is so hard for me right now to not uh go to her Facebook page, like to pull it up and go to her Facebook page. And you know what? I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna do it right now. Oh wait, she's in Canada. She's in Canada. Oh, Let's how see. special she's in. It doesn't get more white than that. She's in Canada. Oh. How special. Oh, she's so, she's so special. Oh, she's so, she's a white, skinny, long blonde hair center part bitch. Oh, she needs, she can, she can shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> oh, and her fucking blonde children. She can, oh, she can. And die. she probably she goes on the beach and takes her panties off and raises her asshole to the sun for energy rejuvenation. <laughs> oh, my God. You know she does. You know she's a butt chugger. You know she is. But chugging sunshine is every chance she gets. You know, and it's funny, though, like, speaking of spirit, like, I went a couple weeks ago. And, um, and I was actually disappointed because they had started to get set up, but they weren't totally set up. So they had some of the animatronics set, but not all of them. Yeah. Mine was mostly empty when I was. Yeah. Cause I love to go do the animatronics. I take pictures with the animatronics every year. Oh yeah. But anyway, I will admit I was a little bit offended that they have a section now, which I've never noticed before, that is, like, Wiccan. And they actually sell oh. Spirit Halloween Store branded tarot cards. I have noticed that, yeah. I 
I am pretty much a person that tries to not be offended by stupid shit. But that kind of offended me. But that's definitely for decoration purposes and not for anything else. Yes, it is. I mean, well, that's definitely like, for decorating for your Halloween party. It was a whole deck of the whole 78. I mean... Oh, I know. And I was oh, like... I wow, that's really weird because do they not understand that this is like an integral part of thousands and thousands, if not millions of people's spiritual path? I don't think that they think that's what it is. Uh, I think they think it's gypsy fortune teller costume shit. Yeah, I just thought that was, I will admit, I was a little bit offended by it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So take that issue. Well, I mean, yeah. You know. I don't think I don't think they think anything different than having um like a, a pretend light up crystal ball or anything else. Yeah. I don't think they but think it's, it's just any different. always like too like like uh, as much of a horror fan as I am, I'm constantly offended because oh the pinnacle. It must be Satanism. It must be evil. It must be human sacrifice. It must or be. Or the death card you know, or the devil card from a tarot and deck. It's yeah. not anything to do with that. So, yeah, I, got, I do have my own little issues with spirit regarding the tarot cards. But you know what? It is what it is. And Halloween is the capitalist holiday that it is. And yet kind of need to shut up about certain things because it is what it is. There's probably tons of shit that's part of different costumes or whatever that we don't pay attention to because we're not interested in it that other people would get upset about. I mean, there's all kinds of like there's all kinds of religious iconography and stuff you know, Christianity based iconography and stuff. That's part of costumes that we don't care about because it doesn't bother us. Yeah. And it's interesting because I saw, I actually read an article a couple days ago and about all these people offended by people dressing like Indians, gypsies, Mexicans, whatever. Right. But when we did our live broadcast, I was dressed like an Egyptian pharaoh. True, but was that also... Is that offensive or is it not offensive because it's ancient and nobody in it would, has dressed like because that in 2,000 ancient. years? You know? Because it's an ancient character as opposed to someone walking around. Yeah, I actually now. thought about that and I was like, well, but I'm sure there's somebody that would find a reason to be offended by it. I mean, the Egyptian lover's entire entire career. He's not from Egypt. No. Nope. He just decided that, that he was going to go the Egyptian route for his artwork on his album cover. Well, you know, but I bet there's some middle class white grad student academic bitch that would be offended by that somehow. Oh, um, oh of course. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do they even live? Aren't they offended by everything? I mean, like, how can they even breathe? Because somehow breathing must be offensive. Well, you know, the other day um, I posted a meme that I thought was, well, I guess I guess it was technically a meme. It was just a saying. But it was um, it was just in, in a therapy group that I'm in. And this, this is another kind of uh, shut up, you dumb bitch sort of a situation. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> but um, basically what it said was, if I'm too much for you, go find less. It was something I saw somewhere else. And I that just struck me as being as as someone who has always kind of I spent I mean, Anyone who listens to this show would have would find it very, very hard to believe that I spent most of my life being really, really quiet and and being as small as I could possibly mm-hmm. make my personality and whatever. And, and just being very quiet and, and sitting in the corner and just observing and not actually participating in anything and just not and just having the tiniest personality I could have. Um, so. 
But part of that was because I was too much, you know, too much of everything. Mm -hmm. And so if you're too much, then you have to try to be less of that. And that spoke to me a lot. Like, you know, if, if I'm too much for somebody, it's not for me to be less of me. Mm -hmm. It's for you to go the fuck away and go find someone who is less so that you can go be happy over there. So I shared that in this therapy group and you know, dozens of people are like, oh my God, yes, thank you. Oh, I love this. I'm writing it down, you know? And then this bitch named Becca, who's who'd never posted in the group before, is like, well, I don't see why you should have to put someone else down in order to make yourself feel good. I'm like, who did I put down? Oh, who am I talking to? Oh my God. Because you said they were less. You're implying that they're less than you. And I'm like, you're making a judgment out of the word less. If I said, if, if I, if the statement was, I'm too tall for you, so you should go find someone shorter. Yeah. That's not a judgment statement. Oh, yeah. If I said, I'm too fat for you, so you should go find someone thinner. You're not going to be like, oh my God, you're putting down the thin people. It's like, just, <laughs> j- you're deciding that the word less means less. In, in the context of the statement, l- the only way that less is bad is when people wanted me to be less and I don't want to. Like, that's the only way something is less. You know, I shouldn't have to be less to be acceptable. And, and she, and like, nobody agreed with her and that made me very happy. Uh, but it was uh, like, uh, she, it's like, bitch, are you going to have a semantics argument with me? She was like, well, you know, in the world of motivational in motivational speaking, you have to be careful of your words. And I'm just like, okay, first of all, you're like, oh, tw- you bitch, you're like 20. You stupid yuppie you're cunt. Like, oh, you're my You're like 20 God. and your entire Facebook profile is pictures of you at a gym. Like you mm, are being used ugh. in advertisements for a workout place. And it's all like, oh, look at me, look at me working out on the machines. And it's like, you don't get to talk to anyone else about how they feel. Oh, my God. And I bet this dumb cunt considers... And her name is fucking Becca. I bet this cunt considers herself to be a life coach. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, that you and I should be life coaches, really. Oh yeah. I mean that's what we should do. I mean really, that's what we that's what we should be doing. <laughs> that's really uh... what this show is. <laughs> and shut the fuck up. Life coach life coaching with Pitney and Amelia. And you know, and it's like it's people like that that why I hate social media so much. Cuz uh, oh my god. The Lexies and the Beckas of the world. Yep. Uh, and I bet damn, they're both women. members of the organic elite. Oh, I'm sure she is. Oh, she's horrible. Anyway. They and probably anyway. go to the Whole Foods website and masturbate to orgasm. <laughs> anyway. I bet I'm probably right, because I always am. <laughs> are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Why are you doing that voice? I don't know. (coughs) I thought it made me sound cool. It doesn't. I'm Jason Bishop, host of the Invasion of the Remake podcast with co-hosts Sam Stepanenko and Trish Coughlin. Join us each week as we rotate talking about your favorite films and their not-so-favorite remakes. We'll also dig deep to find forgotten films that we think are more worthy of remaking, complete with our own fantasy casting. You can get all 130 episodes and counting on... Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, and all the best podcast providers, even... Frickin' YouTube. For the low, low price of absolutely nothing, join the invasion. Subscribe today. Or we'll blow up your planet. Did you want to talk about your dumb bit? Oh my god. Okay.
while well, while we're on in dumb bitch land. Okay, so you know, I was perusing. Mm-hmm. And I saw this thing. And it was like a woman was shocked to discover just how much data Amazon had collected about her. So I was like, okay. oh, okay, well, like, you know, I shop on Amazon all the time. Right. And just let me say, as a, you know, an offside of this, it did really, really freak me out. Like the other day, on my mother's computer, mm-hmm. same network, completely different computer. Right. I was on Amazon. I bought some Estee Lauder lipstick for her on okay. Amazon on my mother's computer. Right. Later that night on my Facebook separate computer, all of a sudden I have all these Estee Lauder ads. Oh, yeah. That oh, is, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It's good mark. Well, I've told you about yeah. how, how you know, I could be having a chat conversation, typing chat on the work inter-office chat system mm-hmm. about a salsa that he bought somewhere in Austin. And then after work, I log onto my phone, which is on a completely different system. And the first thing I see on Facebook is an ad for that. Oh, salsa I know. That I'd never heard that. I'd never heard of before 10 minutes before. You we know, and I mean, it. it's kind of weird, yeah. but you got to admit, I mean, it's good marketing. Okay. Whatever. Oh yeah. Anyway. So this woman. And some of us are real suckers for, they put it in front of us and we fucking buy it and we are suckers. Yeah. Um, But I will admit, you know, there's a bad side and I will get to my story in a minute. Um, But I will admit, you know, there's a bad side to it, but there's a good side to it because if they know what I'm interested in, I've often seen cool stuff that I would have never seen before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, okay, so anyway, Half of the cool woman. shit that I get people for presents is because of stuff that the internet decides to put in front of me, and I go, holy shit, that's awesome, and I buy it for somebody. It, that shit works. I can't, you know, I'm not going to not buy it. It's cool. Yeah, so anyway, so yeah. this woman, is, anyway, so this article, this woman, whose name I don't know because she only goes by... Her TikTok name, oh God. which yes. is my data, not yours. Oh, God. So she okay. obviously has an axe to grind because she's one of the tinfoil hat people. Uh-huh. She's she's a Von Lichtenstein. Oh, God. Yes, of course. Anyway, TikToker, my data, not yours, explained I requested all the data Amazon has on me, and here's what I found. So, Amazon sent her a folder. Okay. And that is pretty, I mean, I don't even want to get into the discussion of Amazon being ethical or non-ethical or blah, 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 blah. But the fact that they requested this and Amazon was like, oh, here you go. Pretty cool on Amazon. That's kind of amazing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by yeah. that, frankly. Oh, but anyway, but before I go in, she revealed she has three Amazon smart speakers, which means three Alexa devices, right? Oh, Jesus. And, oh, and her home oh. also contains smart light bulbs. Okay, so she literally is surrounded by Amazon listening to every word she says all the day long. Yes. Because that's what those things are. Yes. But anyway, so this is... <laughs> well, Jesus Christ, woman, you literally invited the vampire into your house. Yes. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> and this literally, it really did. I, you know me. I do not laugh. I laugh on this show often. Yeah. But I often do not laugh out loud at things, and I don't laugh at things that... Well, you laugh on the show because I'm hilarious. Oh, yes. 
but this made me laugh out loud, and I just have to read it. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm bracing myself. All right. The TikToker then clicked on the audio file, and it revealed thousands of short voice clips that she claims Amazon has collected from her smart speakers. Um, of course, of course, right, okay. Oh my, I love that it's the actual voice clips. And oh, I love that. this is what made me laugh. Oh my god, oh my god. She described them as, quote, so scary, unquote. <laughs> and then played one of her, talking about turning on a light. <laughs> So oh, while well, she's using her God. smart light bulbs that she installed on purpose because that's how she turns her lights on and off. And so she goes, turn on the light and the light goes on. And now she's horrified. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus woman. And oh my God, that made me laugh so hard. And it's like, of course it, you're going to be recorded because it's, it has to go to, I mean, I know it's instantaneous. But you have to say something that it goes to something to speak to the server so it knows what you said, right? And it's also analyzing your speech so that it can increase its ability to understand you. I mean, it's learning how you talk. I mean, that that's how all this shit works. Yeah, it and learns I'm sorry, how you talk. Like, it is not so scary that I have a smart device in my phone that I'm going to be like, oh, Alexa turn my speaker on to 15 or whatever the fuck. Right. Right. How is that? I, I, I Please, girl, please. Please. Oh but it made me laugh because, you know, that's so scary. And then she played an audio file that talks about her turning on a light. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's like nothing compared to what it could feasibly hear me say on any given day. As much as I talk out loud to myself because I'm a fucking crazy person. And I mean, that's one reason why I don't have things like smart devices, because I talk out loud all the time. And it would always be trying, it would, there would be shit being turned off and on all the time. Because it would always be trying to do my bidding, even though I'm not talking to it. Ugh. You know, oh and God. like, my thing is like, like, we've said this before, we've talked about, you know, Von Lichtenstein, who will not buy a new TV because she's convinced that it's going to spy on her. Because she's so interesting. Who cares? They can spy on me 24-7. I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to be checking my email, talking to the dog, laying in bed playing my Xbox. Yeah. Once a week, if they're really, really, really lucky, they may catch me jacking off. <laughs> uh, right. Who cares? Yeah. I don't even care yeah. about that. It's like, pff, I don't care. Who cares? Give me a break. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's not like in the old days. Now, if it was spying on us 30 years ago, it would have something to, it yeah. have something to see. <laughs> but I was happy <laughs> to, a lot of people are, just think she's stupid, you know? Oh, that's fantastic. Well, can somebody explain to me why this is scary? I'm not yeah. interesting what enough to care if they collect my contacts or audio when I'm talking about lighting up a light bulb. Yeah, there's actually, there's things that could be scary, but the thing she's claiming is scary is like the least scary part of it, I would say. Oh my God. But she's obviously like a tinfoil hatter who... Oh yeah. Oh my God. You know, and God does it's she amazing. look stupid. Oh, I can only imagine. Ugh. She's ugly Wait, well, and she's stupid and shut the fuck up. My and dad and was, not yours. My dad and not yours. I'll have to look her up later. Oh my God. 
I mean, there's a lot of good TikTokers out there, but God, there's a lot of crazy motherfucker TikTokers out there. Yeah, and it's like she, she she's off it because she downloaded like over three thousand files. But it's and all, I bet she's crazy enough to listen to them. But all it's too. all like Alexa, play "Like a Prayer" by Madonna. Alexa, yeah. <laughs> turn the light on. And, I mean, who the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, play Burn Bitch Burn. <laughs> yes. Alexa, yes. play Scandinavian Summer <laughs> by Egyptian Lover from the album 1984. I mean, we can't do this, but I wish we could post a picture of her because God, does she look stupid. But we. Oh, I think everyone can find her. Know, She's yes. clearly a, a a major public person now. She's decided to make sure the world knows who she is. And this picture of her in the article, For all of her being looking, afraid. She looks so very, like, offended and wounded as only a white woman could. Yes! yes. <laughs> oh. With her goddamn very perfectly manicured eyebrows. Thank you very much. That bitch oh, wow. probably spent $100 on those eyebrows. You oh know, white yuppie cunt. Yes. <laughs> God, white women are the worst. Calling white men too. They're pretty bad. They're pretty, pretty bad. Although they are the best, though, because they're circumcised. But we're not going there again. <laughs> <laughs> We can't all, it can't always come back around to circumcision. <laughs> I would venture to say probably 50% of our episodes. Mention circumcision? I have a mention of circumcision and my distaste for the uncircumcised penis. I don't know about 50%. <laughs> I don't know about 50%, but I, I think it is a, a startling number. <laughs> I think it's a solid third. I think it's a solid third. Oh, yeah? Out of, what are we, we're up to 144. We're up to episode 144 now. So, uh, but I, I, I think it's a solid third. So that's about 50 episodes that talk about Snippy Snip. Oh, yeah. And there's actually a little <laughs> song that I sing to the dog. Well, your dog has a pee-pee problem. Yeah, but I sing a little song to the dog. There's nothing more disgusting than an uncut cock. An uncut <laughs> cock. An uncut cock. There's nothing more disgusting than an uncut cock. There's nothing more <laughs> disgusting in the world. I say oh. that to my dog. <laughs> okay. Scary and weird, but I was yes. a scary and weird person. <laughs> oh, that goes without saying. <laughs> This week, I'm reading something that's been circling Facebook for a while. It was written by Brianna Wiest. Self-care is often a very unbeautiful thing. It is making a spreadsheet of your debt and enforcing a morning routine and cooking yourself healthy meals and no longer just running from your problems and calling the distraction a solution. It is often doing the ugliest thing that you have to do, like sweat through another workout or tell a toxic friend you don't want to see them anymore, or get a second job so you can have a savings account, or figure out a way to accept yourself so that you're not constantly exhausted from trying to be everything, all the time, and then needing to take deliberate, mandated breaks from living to do basic things like drop some oil into a bath and read Marie Claire and turn your phone off for the day. 
a world in which self-care has to be such a trendy topic is a world that is sick. Self-care should not be something we resort to because we are so absolutely exhausted that we need to take some reprieve from our own relentless internal pressure. True self-care is not salt baths and chocolate cake. It is making the choice to build a life you don't need to regularly escape from. And that often takes doing the thing you least want to do. It often means looking at your failures and disappointments square in the eye and re-strategizing. It is not satiating your immediate desires. It is letting go. It is choosing new. It is disappointing some people. It is making sacrifices for others. It is living a way that other people won't, so maybe you can live in a way that other people can't. It is letting yourself be normal, regular, unexceptional. It is sometimes having a dirty kitchen and deciding your ultimate goal in life isn't going to be having abs and keeping up with your fake friends. It is deciding how much of your anxiety comes from not actualizing your latent potential, and how much comes from the way you were being trained to think before you even knew what was happening. If you find yourself having to regularly indulge in consumer self-care, it's because you are disconnected from actual self-care, which has very little to do with treating yourself and a whole lot to do with parenting yourself and making choices for your long-term wellness. It is no longer using your hectic and unreasonable life as justification for self-sabotage in the form of liquor and procrastination. It is learning how to stop trying to fix yourself and start trying to take care of yourself, and maybe finding that taking care lovingly attends to a lot of the problems you were trying to fix in the first place. It means being the hero of your life, not the victim. It means rewiring what you have until your everyday life isn't something you need therapy to recover from. It is no longer choosing a life that looks good over a life that feels good. It is giving the hell up on some goals so you can care about others. It is being honest, even if that means that you aren't universally liked. It is meeting your own needs so you aren't anxious and dependent on other people. It is becoming the person you know you want and are meant to be. Someone who knows that salt baths and chocolate cake are ways to enjoy life, not escape from it. <laughs> so, speaking of, so speaking of pounding meat... Speaking of pounding, uh, pounding meat, I want I want to do a, a cooking segment. Oh my god, yes! Because we haven't done one in a really long time, and I've been I've been really wanting to, but I wasn't really sure what what to do. And then and then a few weeks back, I whipped up some chicken parmesan from scratch, and it was so goddamn good. Uh-huh. And I realized as I was doing it how. It really isn't hard, but there's so many, all, every step involved is like a, everyone should know how to do this kind of step. And it's like, if you can make chicken Parmesan, you can make anything. I guess. It's, you know, and it's, it's very easy and oh my God, it's, it's so goddamn good. So I think, I think we're due for a bitchin' in the kitchen. Amen. It's been too long. Bitchin' in the kitchen, I'm crying in the bedroom. 
room all night. Woo! So yeah, so I guess since it's been a while, um, it's possible that we have some listeners who might have not heard me do a bitchin' in the kitchen segment. I don't normally do recipes, and this isn't technically a recipe. It's usually me talking about cooking technique stuff, but throughout the course of me explaining techniques, by the end of it, there's food. But chicken parmesan, for people who don't know, it's fake Italian food. It is, it's as American as fortune cookies. It is uh, a breaded chicken cutlet with a yummy tomato sauce poured on it and cheese melted on top, served with like pasta and or veggies. And it's like slightly more sophisticated comfort food. It It is like ultimate comfort food. It's fabulous. It's like, yes. It's yeah, so good. It's now, we're, now since, since you grew up in a in a big Italian family. Did you grow up with chicken parmesan? Because I definitely didn't. No, no. I grew up with eggplant parmesan, but not chicken. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which oh, is totally. same thing. Basically the same yeah. thing. Although, you know, the the only the closest thing to chicken parmesan that I had Although I guess I guess veal parmesan would have been a thing when I was a kid. But, like, you didn't really see veal a lot. And you definitely don't see veal much now. Oh, but no. It's the so closest not PC thing... anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, it wasn't really then either, but it was slightly, you know, less discussed what it was, you know, what veal actually was back then. But um, the, the, the first place I ever heard of it was it was a sandwich at Burger King. It was like a oh. hoagie roll. It was like a hoagie roll, san- like long skinny sandwich at Burger King. Veal? And I remember it being really. Wow. I, I, I'm i pretty sure it may have been a chicken, but I feel like there may have been. A, I may have to look that up later. But I, but that was how I first heard of its existence. And Burger King would have never done like an eggplant. Like as an adult, oh, I would yeah, heard no. an eggplant. But like. When I learned how to make it, I mean, it took me, a, it took me a while. It wasn't, it, it took me a while to really learn how to do it well. And it was because I had to get the techniques down and a lot of, and, and a lot of the stuff I'm going to explain is the stuff that I had to learn to do it right by understanding why you do it the way you do it. And it'll all become clear because that's what I teach. I don't, you, you can look up a recipe. What I'm telling you is I'm telling you why you're doing, why you do what you do. So you're going to start with the chicken breast. And the most important thing you're going to do, anyone who's ever tried to cook a chicken breast, and we're talking boneless and skinless. Yeah. When, when we're dealing with a cutlet, we're dealing with something that's either been butterflied, which is like cut so that, like cut partly in half and then flipped open or just usually you end up pounding it flat anyway. So you might as well just pound it anyway. Um, you're that what you want is to have an evenly thick pound it into like a chicken pan, a raw chicken pancake, a weirdly shaped, like half an inch oh. thin chicken pancake. And the best way to do that is to get like a, a zippy bag, like a gallon size zippy bag and put your chicken breast in there and, you know, get a rolling pin or, you know, a meat tenderizer hammer or a big fucking skillet, like a heavy skillet and just beat the shit out yeah. of it. And you might want to use a freezer style bag because those are thicker. Like if yeah, you're afraid yeah. of, if you're afraid of busting through the bag, since you're dealing with beating the hell out of raw chicken, you might feel more comfortable if you use a freezer. And style I was going to say, do not not do this either, because if you don't do this, it'll be goddamn shoe leather. Yeah, because you have yes. to you have to make it even the this chicken an even thickness yeah. all the way around so that it'll cook right. Because if you look at a chicken breast, you've got a part of it that's like an yeah. inch to an inch and a half thick, and then the other end it tapers off. To like this paper thin yeah, thing. Yeah, and if you just cook it, and I remember, God, I don't even remember who it was, but there was some like foodie, right? 
Yeah. And they had made some comment one time about something. It was like, oh, there's just nothing more vile than, like, a chicken breast. Like, a baked chicken breast. And it's Well, true you don't like chicken breast. Because it's goddamn chalk. Well, because by the time you've cooked the thick part through, yes. the thin part was cooked through 20 minutes yeah. ago and it's been yeah. it's been so, continuing to cook do what amelia says because otherwise yeah. you're gonna have goddamn chalk so you're 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 flattening it out you're making it an even thickness and you're tenderizing it and it's you're gonna have like this big floppy pancake of raw chicken that's going to be this weird thing but trust me it's totally mm-hmm. worth it and then the next thing, the next thing you're doing is you're breading it. And this is, this is a stage, this is a thing that it took me a long time to fully understand the three stages of breading. You have your flour stage, you have your egg stage, and your breadcrumb stage. And you have to do all three and you have to do in that order. Yeah. And you... Put your seasonings, put your salt and pepper and whatever in the stuff. You you know, you don't have to put the seasoning on the chicken because you're putting it in the flour. You're putting it in the egg and you're putting it in the breadcrumb. That is plenty. And don't dump all the flour, egg, and breadcrumb that you have in the world because as soon as chicken touches it, you're throwing it in the trash. So yeah. anything that doesn't stick to the chicken is going in the trash. You Absolutely. don't get to save it for later. Yeah. You don't get to reuse those breadcrumbs later. So you're going to, so eyeball how much you think it's going to be, put it in there, get as much, you know, stick as much as you can to it. If you need more, you can always add more. But here's the thing. So some asshole. Oh my! Up in the God, that was did you loud. hear that? I sure did. Oh my goodness! That was okay. right in front of my house. <laughs> Someone just had to rev it up as they turned the corner right in front of my house. I might as well keep talking. So, so you start with the flour. The flour. The flour's job is to make a nice dry surface for the egg to stick to, and then the egg is to add a wet proteiny surface for the breadcrumb to stick to. And I know it seems weird. Like, why are we making it dry just to make it wet, just to make it this? Ultimately, you're making glue. You are making glue and you're going to give the glue a chance to turn into glue. Uh-huh. But that, but the, but the most important thing, flat when it's flour time, make sure every Every part of that chicken has flour on it. If there's, since you've been beaten on it, there might be little flappy flaps that might be folded over on themselves. Make sure that there's, make sure there's no little wet bits, little exposed bits anywhere. Make sure flour is everywhere. And then when you put the egg on, make sure every bit of flour is now covered in egg. And then when you put the breadcrumb, make sure every bit of egg is now covered in breadcrumb. And the reason for that is if there is even the tiniest little space that is exposed, that it doesn't have your layer of, of it's like you're building something. If, if, any, if any of the oil that you're going to cook the chicken in can get through to the chicken, through the breading, the oil will get under the breading and the breading will slough off. The only way the breading sticks is if you do all of those steps exactly the way I said. Get the flour everywhere. Get the egg everywhere. Get the breadcrumb everywhere. And then you set it to the side and you let it sit there and you let those three layers fuse together. You give them time to fuse together and become glue. They will become cement and they will actually adhere to the chicken so that when you cook it, they won't fall off. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Every single, every, oh, and when I do chicken parm, this is one of the weird things about chicken parm. And I have found this in many, many recipes and I don't understand it. Um, Like I like to use like panko crumbs because that's what I tend to have in the house. But any kind of, you know, if you have a food processor and you have a bunch of crackers, you can do that. And, you know, pre-salted breadcrumbs, whatever. But, like, I like to get, like, grated Parmesan and mix it into my breadcrumbs. 
Oh, like make it more make yeah, it yeah, more absolutely. breadcrumbs. I mean, yes, obviously yes. heavier on the, because the because the parmesan also adds salt. Yep. It adds that awesome parmesan funkiness. Yep. Because a lot of a lot of chicken parm recipes don't actually have parmesan cheese anywhere in them, and I don't understand that. Well, people are afraid of it now because oh, it's like fat and it's this and that. They put and, mar- they yeah. put they cover the chicken in mozzarella at the I end. I know, but they you put know. mozzarella all over it, and it's like mozzarella, and mozzarella is not parmesan. Is, I mean, you need the mozzarella, mozzarella because it melts. Flavorless. It's like it's good because it melts, but you still I I mean I mean when we get to that stage, I always put a layer of parmesan and then put mozzarella on top of it t- to seal it in. Yeah. Fresh mozzarella is awesome, but you re- it really needs to be combined mm-hmm. with other things. Like the texture of fresh mozzarella is fantastic, but it has to have like balsamic vinegar poured over it and have like fresh basil leaves or whatever. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So, while your chicken and its breading is sitting off to the side, you're going to start working on a tomato sauce. And it doesn't need to be anything super fancy, but you're going to dice up some onion and, you know, put put some garlic in there. And you can use fresh tomatoes if you have them, but I have no problem with canned tomatoes. I think canned tomatoes are awesome. But one thing I will recommend... Um, whole stewed tomatoes the the less processing the tomato has because it's already been cooked in the can so the less that got happened the less that happened to that tomato before it went into the can in the long run the better that tomato is but if it's diced that's fine because it's all going to get all mushy anyway because you're going to you're going to cook it long enough to cook the taste of the can out of it. And you're going to sa- you're going to sauté your onions and your garlic and you're going to put a splash of wine in there or whatever and you're going to dump your, your you know you're going to make you know, you know sauté them until until the uh onions look like they're starting to get cooked in- cooked enough that you could actually eat them. Yeah. Like, you know, Raw onion is not what we want. You know, they, you want them to be cooked before you dump the tomatoes in. You know, check them. Taste them. It's like, do they taste good? Now you're going to dump that shit in there. You know, you got some wine in the house, dump a little bit of wine in there. Um, and kind of keep it on like a medium low heat so that it's, you know, so that it just kind of simmers and just kind of, you know, gets yummy. It doesn't have to be too much. You don't need to pour a whole bunch of herbs and shit in there because you're making something very basic and you want the chicken to be the star. But and and you just put a bunch of onions and garlic in there. It doesn't need much more. I would recommend sticking with basil, but basil is something you're going to put in at the end. Yeah. Because basil, you don't want to boil basil. You don't want to you want to boil the flavor out of basil. And basil is something either go with fresh or go with freeze dried. Anything else is like a waste of basil to me. I'd like when basil's been dried to the point where it's not basil anymore. I don't even see the point of it, especially when basil is so readily available. And, and it's also, also and it really easy to grow. To like a weird thing where it doesn't have its flavor. It cooks down to a weird thing. Right. And like freeze dried basil, you can throw that in at the last possible second. And like this, the smell of basil hits you right in the face. Like as soon yeah. as it hits the liquid, it's like it releases all this aroma and it's beautiful. And like do that right before you serve it. It's beautiful. But or if you're going to do or if you're going to do fresh, um, take the little leaves and roll them like you're going to roll like a little cigarette and then take a knife yeah. and cut cut the little rolled up into little strips. And it makes like it's called a chiffonade and it makes little tiny strings of basil. That's a perfect way to throw that. But do that at the last possible second, which which is way, way later than yeah. the stage we're at right now, because right now we're just getting the sauce started while the chicken is waiting. And so it's going to sit there and some and simmer for a bit. And when I say, you know, it's going to it's going to sit there and cook for a while. It's going to cook. Meanwhile, we have to go cook. We have to go fry our chicken. So you have a you have a skillet, the biggest skillet you have. 
you put some, you, you preheat your skillet, you put some enough oil to make a nice little pool in the bottom. We're not deep frying the, the chicken. You're going to, you're going to gently and like a medium to medium high heat. You're going to lay your chicken gently in there so it doesn't splash. And you'll figure out, you know, based on how it seems to be cooking, how long that's going to be. But like, I don't know, a few minutes maybe, because it's kind of thin. Yeah. And the way I would, the way I would visualize it, you're gonna cook it on the first side so that it cooks like two thirds of the way yeah. through before you flip. Yeah, it. Cause otherwise because otherwise you're gonna have overdone shoe leather. Yeah. After I mean, it it's goes not gonna in the be... oven. Yes. I mean, it's only gonna be in the oven for a second. It's only gonna be in the oven long enough to melt some cheese yeah but, it but go, if you time it, goes it all from right cook to shoe leather really quick well all meat but you're, all but you're, meat you know i don't know chicken i i've never had i mean i've never i've never cooked chicken if, if chicken is thin enough and tenderized enough i've never had chicken go completely i mean i've had chicken go completely dry but not when i'm making something yeah, like this yeah I've had like chicken on a skewer get overcooked to the point where it sucks all the moisture out of your body, you know, like that dry, yeah, yeah. you know, like it had to, it had to go in the trash because there wasn't enough water in the world to, to drink, to make that, to make that go away. But so, um, so you get it and you know, once you flipped it, so you've cooked your first side, flipped it. If you, if you put some Parmesan in the bread, in the breadcrumb, um, it's actually going to brown prettier i think and it'll actually brown a little darker because the cheese has some fat in it that the regular dry breadcrumb wouldn't have and so it might it might seem like oh no i'm burning it but it's actually it's it's a good kind of burnt it's a nutty kind of burnt it's good so once you get that you know cooked on both sides set it off to the side again uh take it out put it on a rack or put it on some like a cookie sheet with some foil on it because it's eventually going to go in the oven so then your sauce your sauce is going to be awesome you throw your basil in um you take some scoops of sauce out and you pour it on the top of the chicken just enough to like sit in a pool on the top of the chicken and then you put the cheese on the top i always put parmesan and then like a layer of mozzarella, or if you have like a mixture, like a pre-shredded mixture of, of assorted Italian cheeses that has like a little of everything in there, mm -hmm. that's perfect. Cause that way you have the meltiness of like the mozzarella and the fontina, but you also have like the nuttiness and the saltiness of the Parmesan and the, and the Romano and stuff. And so you, you kind of heap that on top and you're going to stick it in the oven under the broiler enough to to melt and maybe brown the cheese a little bit on top. And that is, that's all you need for the chicken. The sauce you have left over, you're either going to cook some pasta. You're going to, uh, you know, do you, do you have zucchini? Do you have like the, the last time when I made it recently, zucchini. we had zucchini. a zucchini is so good. We had some, um, frozen like steam in the bag broccoli. Um, in in the freezer and i cooked that like halfway in the microwave and then i threw it in the rest of the the um tomato sauce and kind of tossed it around and cooked it the rest of the way and so we each just had like a slab a giant slab of chicken on our plate and then we had we each had a pile of tomato oh, tomato broccoli, broccoli. Like i despise broccoli oh my god i eat broccoli at least once I a week i despise it Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Yeah. But you like other cruciferous vegetables. I like pretty much all vegetables. Because you love greens. I love To me, it greens. tastes very much like... I, but I despise broccoli. I know. Isn't that weird? That's so crazy. Oh, my you God. You know, but I was just going to say, so, like, I do... So, I... Not that long ago, breaded eggplants... Yeah. Um, you know, with the egg and the Italian breadcrumbs, and I did bake them in the marin, you know, the, the marinara sauce and all that stuff. Yeah. But then after all of that, on the top, feta and dill. 
Really? And it was awesome. And I think that would translate well to chicken, too. I mean, it wouldn't be chicken parmesan, but it's the so same you sort just of had process. Regular... So it was tomato, it was still tomato and breadcrumb and whatever, but you just, for the cheese, you went feta, and for the spices, you went dill. Yeah, I did feta and dill. Huh. And it was really great. Wow. See, I, I haven't been able to get my husband into feta or goat cheese, but I could do that. And it's the same, the same thing. Right. The topping's different. Right. And see, and that's, well, that's one of the things I like about chicken parm is that it's more, it's more a technique than anything else. Cause like once you've, once you've made that, like you've, You've learned about how to evenly cook meat and how that works. You've learned about how breading works and how to do it right as opposed to how to go to all this trouble of breading something only to put it in the oil and have all the fucking breading fall off. I mean, there's nothing worse than that. And I've, I've done that a thousand times. Yeah. And once you learn how to do it right, you'll never have that problem Yeah, again. but I don't think like that, you know, the basil... And the different flavors in that, they are not incompatible with the feta. They're good with the feta. I can see that. Well, because feta is very, t so you're going more tangy than salty. Yeah, That's and it's good yeah. with the feta. It's not incompatible. Well, and I think I think part of it, because chicken parm isn't really necessary. Like I said, it's fake Italian food. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. not really Italian food. And really, Mediterranean food is Mediterranean food. So you can go lots of directions. I mean, you could throw a lot of olives into the sauce. You could, you know, you could go a lot of Kalamata olives with the tomatoes and, um, yeah, and go feta and go, oh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, yeah, I'm think, mom I'm has really gotten into, um, for the listeners that are listening, I live with my mother. Yeah. Although most people probably know that. Anyway, mom has gotten really into like the fresh grated Parmesan in like the tubs. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, the grain canisters. Oh, yes. <laughs> the stuff that's like got sawdust mixed that into it so that it'll be shelf is stable. Fabulous with feta. Oh, sure. Oh, in and fact, it the seems last time it's weird, but it's really good. It's almost like yeah, you get like, cause Parmesan, there's a little saltiness, maybe. Yeah, it's more like salt and funk. It's salt. Parmesan is a strange. Yeah, cheese. and then with yeah. but it's really I I think it's fantastic together. And I'm a big fan of like that presidential brand, that herbed feta that they have, the Mediterranean brand, blend of herbs that comes in the crumbled feta yeah. that you can get in a little tub. I'm a big fan of that. Oh, my God. Yeah. I could eat that every day. Um, one thing that I like about the fresher uh, Parmesan is like I'll get shaved Parmesan where it's like like little sheets like oh, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like I not quite that. like shredded. It's bigger pieces, but you can get that. And then if you want it to be completely pulverized, what I did when I was, um, cause I didn't have any of the powdered when I was doing my, my chicken parm and I wanted to mix some of the cheese in with the, um, with the breadcrumbs, uh -huh. I just put the breadcrumbs into my little mini food processor with a bunch of the shaved Parmesan and I just blitzed oh. it and that ground the Parmesan yeah. up and kind of, kind of coated the breadcrumbs in with the cheese and actually blended it together perfectly, like into this really fine powder. Cause it was panko. So it was already kind yeah, of big. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause it, yeah. With. Yeah. Cause I keep panko around all the time. Cause I make a lot of crab cakes and things like things that I want bigger chunks of breadcrumb. But, oh my God, it's so good. And it's just like, it's like perfect, perfect comfort food. And like, once you can do that, you can take that basic idea and make anything. Yeah, and it's literally simple. Yeah, chicken, eggplants. Yeah. You can do it with anything. You could probably, I just had a weird thought, totally random. But you remember, I went on that 
that bandwagon a few years ago where I was loving the cauliflower steaks. Oh, sure. You could totally do that with cauliflower steaks. I don't, I mean, I guess you could bread it. I guess you I could. I think you totally could. I guess, yeah, as long as you, as long as you soaked it really good, put, put, made sure you had enough flour on it, soaked the egg on it really good, let it sit. I think you totally could. It's the cutting, it's the, it's the slicing the cauliflower steaks that's the tricky. You got to have a really good knife. Well, yeah, but I used to do, remember when I went on that bandwagon, I loved that. Wait, are you talking cauliflower or are you talking cabbage? No, no, cauliflower. I used to do these like cauliflower steaks that were like. I know you went through a cabbage. You went through a cabbage steak phase too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if cabbage would work. It might. Anyway. So (laughs) don't be afraid of cooking. Cooking is fun. Cooking is not that hard. Food is fabulous. Life gets better when you make your own food. Yes. Damn it. It is, everything is better when you can cook your own food. Yes. It's good for you. Even if you're just cooking it for yourself, why wouldn't you cook something nice for yourself? It's good. And then you can have someone over and impress them. Like, ooh. I mean, God, you should have seen my parents' face the first time I made them a pizza. (laughs) You would have thought... You would have thought I'd made beef Wellington. They were so excited. It's like I literally bought a pizza crust and smeared some stuff on it. Oh, girl, like I make stuff for my mom and I think it's so fabulous. And she's just like, eh. Because she doesn't like spice. She doesn't like heat. She just, she's like, eh. Is your mother Verity (laughs) Noslin? for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers. stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. There's nothing more disgusting than an uncut cock. An uncut cock, an uncut cock. There's nothing more disgusting than an uncut cock. There's nothing more disgusting in the world.